We are now going to go into a segment four. And in segment four, we're going to know how to host tabletop RPG games for children. Now we're going to talk about building skills and confidence. And these guys have done a great job of answering. I don't even think I have to add, ask these questions. We can end the stream now because uh, they've done a good job of already bringing a lot of this up. But we're going to focus on this now about building the skills and confidence of children. And because I skipped him last time, I'm going to start with Lord Matthews on this one. And the question is going to be, what specific skills do you believe children can develop through playing tabletop RPGs, and how do you foster those skills? Um, well, I mean, problem solving and creative thinking, um, I think are the key ones. I mean, there's others, reading comprehension, math, um, art, a lot of, think a lot of artists get their start um, playing TTRPGs. But I think the real big ones, problem solving and creative thinking, um, and uh, specifically because they're participating in this sort of collaborative, creative, um, quasi-reality that is being created by everyone at the table. Um, and as far as fostering it um, and, and encouraging it, I, I, do ex I do with them what I do with my in-person gaming crew and my online gaming crew. I, I don't pull any punches. I go, here's the problem. You guys fell into the pit trap and six kobolds attacked you and people are You're the guy that five. pushes the kid off the boat and says, learn to swim. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's how that's exactly how I learned to swim. So like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I don't think um, you're doing um, uh, kids a, uh, any service by um, putting on kid gloves or so to speak with with these games. Again, um, the shadow dark rules allow for these luck tokens. And I and this that's my sort of cushion but i don't if if you spend a luck token and you still fail well just you, you still failed you know um but all that stuff i think i think they like it because i haven't heard any complaints like i said my son got a little weepy the first time but he came back the next day with a vengeance and <laughs> literally and figuratively um and i think uh putting them into these crazy situations some of it especially with like my sandbox game, the ones that they're creating themselves. Um, you know, they learned the value of what happens when you split the party, uh, when they attack the bandits, um, they got lucky regrouped and took them out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think just placing them in danger, not physically in the real world sense, but their characters and they'll, They'll want to solve the problem and they will do it and they'll surprise you. So, yeah. Uh, you do sandbox. So I think this one might work for you. Uh, what role does character development play in building a child's confidence? Oh, that's a good, good question. Huh? Well, there hasn't been a whole lot of that in the, keep on the borderlands because we've only had a few sessions before the summer break started um but with my son on our solar games um you know he really got to sort of explore and kind of come up with his own thing like i said he wanted to play a dwarven fishmonger uh, which I mean, he didn't say use the words fishmonger. He's like, I want to play a dwarf fighter. I'm like, sweet, dwarf fighters are cool. Dad, I want to go fishing. I'm like, you you don't want to go kill goblins? What? Oh, okay, you know. Um, so he again, because there's no rules for that in Shadow Dark. I, I had to come up with stuff, and we worked it out. And I'm like, so what do you think you have to do? And he's like, well, I'm gonna go find a stick. How do I make twine? You know, and and we worked it out, and then he was successful. He started fishing, and he actually sold some of them in the market, um, and he was really excited about that. And then he used that little devious son of mine. He used that as a, a jumping off point to figuring out where the the thugs that jumped him the day before were, and then he sought his revenge. Um, so, um, I might be kind of deviating off the off the uh, question there a little bit, but um, I think just listening to them, you know, and when they succeed, you know, celebrate that success. 
I'm done typing in the chat because every time I try, I misspell stuff. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So let's uh, move up to uh, Frank. Uh, same question for you. What specific skills do you believe children can develop through playing tabletop RPGs, and how do you foster those skills? So when we're talking about kids that are 10 to 14. I mean, like adolescent brain development is 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 a thing. I mean, it's a field of study. It, it's not necessarily anything that you need to know much about. Um, but like the, the planning, prioritization and making good decisions part of the brain just happens to be the, the last part that gets developed. And it's in that target area that we're talking about. So you're, you're going to see sometimes some friction points with some of those particular pieces that at the very least in this kind of a dynamic, you can you, you can start developing, you can start nurturing in a, in a, in a manner that, that is a, like, it's a safe space for lack of way of putting it any other way. Um, but focusing on peer relations, ready to be ready to learn and, and, and be resilient uh, to, to challenges that are being thrown at them that initially they might have absolutely no idea how to solve, but after coming together as a group and thinking about it, they come up with a solution, be it the one that you think that would probably fit or a zany solution that you just went, wow, I wasn't expecting that one. I don't even <laughs> think there are rules for that. Let's figure this one as we go. Math and storytelling are always, you know, that's the, that's the easy one to go to. Storytelling is one that you could probably get the kids to kind of like, all right, explain to me, what is your character now going to do in your turn? And, and not just, I hit them. Like, no, 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 no. Draw it out. How are you going to hit them? What is it that you're going to do? And explain to me in verbal terms what, what that looks like, what that feels like. What is your character thinking and doing at this point? Get them more immersed into the process. Social conventions are always a, also a good one. Uh, Self-control. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a predictor of good mental health, success and happiness later in life. So if mm -hmm. you can start instilling something in, in that child's brain at that age, um, like you're, you're not going to be the key to his success later in life. But you might be that one brick in the wall that helps reinforce it and, and helps keep things steady later in life. And of course, group interactions and cooperative interaction uh, and interactivity, we, we, we've all kind of touched on this uh, in one way or another. Uh, but group dynamics and being able to work as a group as opposed to individual, I am going to solve this or I am going to be the leader or I am going to be the guy that will solve this for everybody else. Eh, that, that, that might work in some cases, but, but certainly not in all cases. Um, and and how, to, how to foster these skills? Um, I, again, there's loot, reward, uh, which are those, those kind of like semi-tangible things that you can give the character as a reward uh xps like experience points is a is is one that we didn't touch on experience points is is something that uh, even as adults we have a hard time are we going to level up at the end of the adventure at the end of the third adventure or are we going to individually dole out xps based off of what you do I, I'm a firm believer that that uh, you, 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 individual XPs is how you do things. That's the proper way to do things. Um, but I can understand the argument for the leveling as a group. I don't like it, but there it is. I'm not going to rebel if that's well, the way. Well, that, that's so game dependent, though. I mean, in kind of games like Watch is, D D and D, you kind of have to do that because of the powers creep. But in the game that you talk, we you know Palladium Rifts, so yep. forth. Everything's so front loaded. A, a, yes, it's difficult and it's not going to happen in most circumstances, but a level one character has a chance of defeating a level 15 character. Yeah, just the right shot at the right time. Yeah. Um, you know, the, but, but that goes to, uh, you know, influencing rewards by class. And this is where, again, we talked about this being conversant with the game and then being able to bend the rules where you go, you know what? <clears throat> You guys did something really spectacular there. I'm I'm just going to give your group uh, individual horror factors now uh, because you are now more renowned. Uh, like th those rules aren't in there really well developed, but like you know you you you're, you're people now know who you are based on what you just accomplished. It's um, basically a, a nice way to fudge a reputation system. Exactly. So here it is, you know, you've, you've now got a horror factor of something like eight, maybe 10, nothing stratospheric, 
Uh, but they understand who you are and they might have that hesitancy that you can now leverage. And then you build that into the storytelling and you go, ah, the NPC, the mook that tried to stop you at the gates, the gate guard, shaking in his boots now. Now that might influence somebody to come through with maybe a non-combat scenario to uh, to get into the gate, um, as opposed to breaking it down or driving through the gate uh, with, without permission. So all, all those kinds of things can can be done. And, and you know, you're, you're talking about kids that don't know the system enough to know that you are completely breaking what an adult would be losing his mind over. Uh, like, what are you talking about? Giving a horror factor 10 to somebody for just doing something good. Well, why the hell not? I mean, other yeah, games have morale. I mean, D and D has morale and reaction roles. I mean, a horror factor can kind of encompass that a, a similar idea for that. I I don't see that as a, pro a problem. I think it's a neat idea. No, uh, but I mean, like feats and and disadvantages just just allow like you know what uh, we're gonna negate your disadvantage. Uh, I'm just gonna negate that as part of the role or whatever the case may be in in terms of that particular game system fudge it in terms of benefiting them for doing previous actions moving forward. Um, you know, kind of like, what is this? Uh, suede has the, the bennies, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, oh. yeah, it's, it's a weird term. I understand that, but Hey, uh, it, it's a perfect you know, it, term for children. That is a great game for kids because they can have bennies yeah. instead of saying benefits like a freaking adult. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, or that token that they can, you know, you give them that token, that tangible thing that, uh, you know, uh, we were talking about earlier. Uh, you give them that tangible token where they, they, they they're holding on to it. You know, it's a little bit John Wick um, where they, they got it and they hand it back in and they gain a benefit for whatever it is that needs to happen. Off you get. OK, um, I'm not going to ask you a follow up directly because I want to see how Naga Hyde answers and then uh, I'll have a comment and uh, some follow ups after that. So Naga Hyde, uh, moving down to you here on the screen there. What specific skills do you believe children can develop through playing tabletop RPGs and how do you foster these skills? Uh, I think they both covered it pretty good, uh, but my answer is communication. Uh, problem solving, which uh, Lord Mattias mentioned, and I believe Frank mentioned as well. Uh, also, relationship building. Uh, and it, in all honesty, though, if you really sit down and look at every skill a person needs in order to survive in the real world, you're going to learn it while role playing. Um, but uh, Sorry, I'm kind of. I I wrote notes for this one because this one it, it took me it took me a while to really think of how I wanted to answer. Well, well, this well here let, let 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 me interject with what what I've gotten. If you you know want to answer, then expound upon okay. with what your notes are saying. Go ahead. So a friend of mine, this is years ago. He was saying that he was using Dungeons and Dragons to help his kid who had Aspergers socialize. It help helped him. You know, obviously, thinking through the problems weren't the, weren't the issue, but how to react to situations, and he could use the game itself to help socialize, whether it was one on one or trying to have friends over, and and working through those those personal issues. And he's like, yeah, it, it's a struggle to talk with my child. It's a struggle, a struggle to send my child to school. But we get around this table and we play this game. Now he can have friends. Now he can socialize. Yes, yeah, still needs a little bit of adult supervision and so forth, but but you get the idea. Um, so it's a great way. You guys had said problem solving. Uh, absolutely. The, the group dynamic stuff. How your character... Sure, you're, you're a child. Hell, we're adults. I'm 51 years old. We sit around the table, and how would we resolve this? Not as... John, as Frank, as I don't know your guys' real names, but you know, but uh, but as you know, as, as what's my character's name in, in Bear's game, as a Thane, as uh, whatever character you guys are, you know, but we're looking at how would we relate? What are things you would do differently? Heathen Dog said something to me one time before I played Mage because I'd played Vampire and I wasn't into the White Wolf system, and he's trying to get me into his Mage game and I wasn't playing. And he said, Ask yourself this if you had the power of this of a mage, which is basically the power of a god, what would you do with it? That's what mage answers. That's what, like, what would you do with this? I'm like, oh, 
I never thought of it that way before. And I sat in his game and well, we found out what I did with that. I was a nice guy. It was a great guy. I was always trying to do the right thing. And then when I got ultimate power, guess what happened? Oh, all of a sudden that switch flipped and I was doing things like, holy crap, this is so out of my character. Like, no, it's not out of your character at all because what happens when you get that power? But it isn't because we didn't have the group dynamics. We had the group dynamics. This dude was more powerful. I had to submit. This guy was more powerful. I had to submit. They're, they're going back and forth. But when I got the power, what happened? Who knows? If for, for one person, be like, let's all hug it out. For me, <laughs> I locked one guy in a monolith, and I don't even remember what I did to the other dude. Again, you get the idea, right? But it's that group dynamic. Like, how would you resolve these things if you weren't just you in the real world? If you were, you know, King Arthur with the sword. If you were Merlin with the magic. If you were, you know, in, in Heracles, you know, uh, on the trials. How would you resolve those things? And I think that is absolutely amazing for kids, especially if you've got a kid who likes to read. That was me. Believe it or not, once I got into finally found fantasy and was allowed to read it, man, I loved expressing that stuff in the games. Oh, at Rex Steel, it happened in one adventure. We were playing for months and it happened in one adventure. It's all perfectly story driven. And in, in, uh, if you know how Heaton Dog runs his games, this isn't like something like we'd worked behind the scenes for anything. It happened. It made sense the story. And then I flipped it on its script. So, uh, but uh, so, so uh, in all of that kind of uh, uh, gloviation that I was doing there, the point that I wanted to make is you can resolve real world issues, maybe not exactly, but. We had some. We did a BattleTech summit. I've talked about this story. I won't go into the whole thing, but we did a summit at at uh, IHOP in New Mexico, where we were the house lords, role playing that out. But it, it but it, it does teach the group dynamics. So what happens when that house has a military that can raffle stomp you, and you have to kind of be nice, even though you hate them with every fiber of your being? You please tell me more uh, syrup. What? I was going to say, please tell me you were cosplaying when you went into IHOP for the summit. No, no, but we did hex. Okay, a little tangent. We the the waitress stopped ser uh, stopped serving us, and finally, we well, one of the guys got was like, "Hey, we, where's our waitress?" She would not come out and talk to us anymore because we were talking BattleTech, Aries Conventions type stuff, you know, Geneva Convention, you know the. And so we were talking about chemical warfare, nuclear warfare, the amount of troops <laughs> like attacking dropships and jump ships, and she was like, "These guys are nuts." And she wouldn't, this isn't, by the way, this is for 9-11, this is in 1994, but it was, but yeah, she wouldn't serve us anymore. But, uh, but we were role-playing those characters. But again, it's a, it's a, it teaches, I'm not saying it teaches politics, but it does teach a social dynamic. So you, you brought up something that I had totally forgot about, um, because I, I, when I think about a friend of mine, I don't think of them as having asperger's mm -hmm. uh but he did it, it, well he was he's he's a friend now but when i first met him he was just a friend of mine's younger brother but we started playing role-playing games with him to help him get you know better at talking with people mm -hmm. and it it helped it helped a lot like now he runs a radio show in northern oh, nice. minnesota up in war road so <laughs> hey great hockey team <laughs> uh well, it's it's funny you say that because uh how was i how was i going to say this um it wasn't just there's was something you said you, you triggered a, 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 a what did you just say see um Oh, it, what I was thinking about there is I don't know how your guys' brains work, but my brain works like I hate small talk. I hate it. Hey, how's the weather day? Shut up and leave me alone. You know, like that's that's my general mentality. Like, you know, I'm not like that when people say that to me, but I that's how I feel it is. So I don't do small talk. I don't talk about the weather. I don't talk about local sports team or whatever. But we're in a gaming show here, right? So we could talk about gaming and I could bloviate about this. We start talking about the Vikings. Oh, I can sit there and talk about the, you know, constantly. You, if it's if there's something to talk about, you give me focus on something, I absolutely can and and will do it. And gaming is like that. Okay, let's talk about your character. What is your character going to do? How does your character perceive this situation? How you know, what do you however you want to do that at your table? You want to just f focus on the game mechanics or do you want to focus on role playing or whatever? 
But when you have that thing that allows the the child, hopefully, because uh, we're t- supposed to be talking about children here, a uh, focus, it can help some people like me come out of a shell. I was such a crazy introvert. You you cannot know how much of an introvert I was. Uh, thanks to being bullied. Thanks to just the the way I was raised. Thanks to so many different things. Hell, you go back and look at my first streams, and I was no longer an introvert then. But uh, it's it still night and day compared to where I am now. Having something to focus on can absolutely help people come out of their shell. Oh, totally. That that's what that's why when when I read this question, that's why the one of two of the first three things that I wrote down were communication and relationship building. Because you talk about your you being an introvert. I'm still an introvert. Like I would I'd rather be down here in my basement talking to you guys than interacting with real people. Oh, same here. (laughs) Bar with, 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 you know, with the wife or whatever, like give, give me the nerd stuff, everything else. Just leave me alone with like, yeah, I'm that guy at parties when they go, when they go, are you okay? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Are you sure? Well, yes, I'm fine. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. I'm fine. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cuss. We see, I said we weren't going to cuss on the child stream. And there I go. Uh, but, but the idea is like, I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm fine. This is just who I am. I don't have anything in common with you weirdos. So I'm sitting here enjoying my booze. That's like when the first time I did one of these on your channel and we got to session to segment five. And you guys, were, a couple of you guys were like, are, are you okay now, guy? You know, you can leave at any time. I was still enjoying myself, even though I wasn't talking. <laughs> no, we, I, we let people know that they can leave because sometimes people are like, well, I thought I had to hang out. Like, no, when it comes to se- first four segments are the real show. Segment five right. is when we just kind of hang out. That, that's a, that, that is no way, shape, or form. Get the heck out of here. <laughs> if I want to do that, I'll just click the button. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, let's 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 bring this let's bring this back right, a little right. bit here because we do have one more question to uh, to go. Uh, do you, uh, Frank and Lord Mattias, do you guys want to uh, piggyback on that at all, or do you think that was good? Or okay, uh, no super chats again. So uh, yep, and I didn't even start anything else. So we are going to move on to the last question of the night. I'll probably I'll probably be a liar on that, but uh, and I think we're on. I don't know who we're on. Let's start with Nagahide. Nagahide. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, it's been a while since I've started with him, I think, so we're, we'll just start with Nagahide. What strategies do you use to promote teamwork and cooperation among child players? Oh, these last two questions were really tough for me. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, so... let's be fair. We've talked about this all night, right? Uh, it's a group dynamic game. It's a it's a it's a game about t- teamwork and cooperation. So how, so now it's just about how do you promote it? It could just be in simple language that you use when you talk to them. I don't know. It probably is, and I I'm not good enough at self analyzing that aspect to how I run a game to answer this question in that way. Do you put but any tricks or traps in the game that forces them? Like you, one person has to do this, another person has to. They kind of have to work mm-hmm. together. Oh, okay. No, I I try i I try to let everything kind of happen naturally now okay so i was gonna cut this out but i'll i'm gonna bring it into this part even though i i was was going to cut it out after rereading it in my notes i wrote down uh about my daughter on as after the first couple of sessions of play she didn't seem to really be as into it as my son and my son had a friend that would play as part of the group when she would get bored she would start targeting that player inside the game like do her character would do something against them so what i would try and do at that point is i would try and some people might call it railroading but when it comes to 
kids sometimes to get them focused you have to kind of do this i would stop the scene that was happening and and throw like a surprise combat in there to kind of get her refocused on working as a team to try and solve whatever problem i threw at them be it an enemy or a puzzle or an npc that walks up and you know starts giving them a quest or whatever it is right i had to distract her from what she was doing in order to get her back focused did it work uh, yeah most of the time it worked eventually she just stopped playing so then i didn't have to worry about it anymore so <laughs> <laughs> um, like I, but that, that, that's interesting because we in in uh, my junior well, late junior high group when i finally was able to play with other people we 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 went madhouse against each other and like if you were to see the games today you'd be like what is wrong with you guys like do any of you have friends no just us and we hated each other <laughs> we didn't but it seemed like we did i'm gonna kill his dog i'm gonna take all his stuff i'm gonna and this wasn't to the bad guys this was to our party we just had that weird awkward social dynamic that we didn't know how to get along with people I came from a house that was very, very, we'll just say sheltered, I guess would be the word to use. Another guy came from a house where he was in ninth grade and his parents never came home. They paid the bills and he ran the house with his sister. Like what the, and then another guy who you know, is just, what's that? That was my childhood. Yeah. So, so, but, but you get, you get the difference in di dynamics. Yeah. And so we'll just say the, uh, the examples weren't always there when somebody's crazy sheltered, you don't know how to act around the real world because you're not allowed to act. When you get somebody who doesn't have parents to teach anything, you just do whatever the F you want to do. The bills are getting paid by mom and dad or mom or dad or somebody. Uh, and then, you know, we had the gamut in between. So yeah, we had very horrible social dynamics until my, probably my senior year in high school. Yeah, one one of the worst deaths I ever had as a as a for one of my characters as a player happened from a friend of mine during a gaming session. He uh I was playing a mutant pigeon in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and uh I called him Petey the Pigeon. And uh my other friend had uh a lion, mutant lion with a plasma gun. And for whatever reason, he decided to shoot me with plasma gun and turn me into crispy pigeon. So, yeah. Was there a reason? Was there a reason ever. for that, or just because he was there and wanted to do it? Because he was there and wanted to do it. <laughs> Social dynamics for your children, people. Yeah. This is why we all still need adult supervision. <laughs> right. That's the kind of guy who becomes the best man at your wedding, or you just <laughs> falls completely off the radar later in life. He was at well, my first wedding, but he wasn't the best man. Close. Well, some of the stories yeah. that I have, and then we'll move on to Lord Mattias here, is uh, if you go on my Discord, if you ever talk to Von Zark, he was around for a lot of the shenanigans that we did, and he'll verify uh, our stupidity. Uh, but... Uh, Lord Matthias, uh, let, let's let's actually ask you a real question here. Uh, what strategies do you use to promote teamwork and cooperation among child players? Um, well, I think rewards work. Um, and again, I, you know, I've I started every session with the Keep on the Borderlands uh, campaign with like a reminder. Remember, this is a team sport. It's okay if you die, you know, just kind of make sure to remind them. Um, but as far as promoting the teamwork, um, I kind of focused on consequences and what would happen if they were not functioning as a team. Um, you know, they, I've talked about this cobalt thing. They weren't really paying attention. Things went to crap. Then all of a sudden they had to be, you know, play as a team. Uh, they split the party when looking for bandits, kind of because they were starting to, the social dynamic was breaking down. Things went to crap, but then they, you know, 
realized that they needed to work together and then they they got rid of the bandits um in game i also kind of enforced you know what would happen if they started um running amok uh in the in the keep um and and causing trouble i went to some lengths to describe you know how tall the walls are and the crenellations and the um the soldiers and the guards you know moving about and then i discussed some crows cages that were hanging over the walls um and with some and that's where some of the bandits ended up so um uh, I, you know, I, I put in some in-game and out-of-game reminders, like, you know, this, you, you need to work together if you're going to survive. And I've also had, you know, NPCs talking about, um, you know, how dangerous the borderlands are. The the, the gate, the guard uh, at the gate, um, in fact, would laugh at them. Just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to make it, you know, that kind of thing. But when they did, everyone was like, oh, my God, you you, you made it back alive, you know, from the borderlands. That's that's crazy. So um, I try to keep it fun because I don't want a lecture, but you are dealing with kids. So mm -hmm. I do think um, it's important to not be afraid to just sort of, you know, being a game master, you got to control that table to maybe give us... A, a look when someone's starting to maybe act in a way they shouldn't um fortunately i haven't had to deal with anything too detrimental but there was some quote-unquote joking around about picking on you know shooting someone in the back to take their gold and i just was like you know gave them a look i'm like you sure that's a good idea oh i'm just joking oh, okay good <laughs> you know no, you said it it must happen <laughs> <laughs> so but i've been i've been fortunate thus far um to not have to see anything too detrimental i in fact i think um what's likely to enforce uh the the group dynamic and the cooperation is when they do something where they're everything's breaking down and then characters start dropping and permanently you know they've come awfully close but so how do you encourage children to recognize and appreciate each other's contributions so the contributions of the other people at the table oh just getting excited when someone does something cool i think that's uh that's awesome like um and also like the um low luck tokens in shadow dark you know it's sort of like this um you know they do something cool you give them another luck token you know um and then they start helping each other out with those tokens because they want people to succeed so um yeah I, I i do a lot of a lot of celebrations like oh wow that was great i, I sometimes feel like i'm hamming it up a little too much um does that but, get them excited as well for each other instead of just being like my sword did this yeah well my other thing did that like no you did a great job uh yeah i mean i don't want to say it's like super awesome kumbaya around the table but yeah they they are um it's it's hard to tell it's hard to tell when you're in the moment but you know my buddies where we were playing was like a 30 minute drive from my house so like um after the last session with the bandits you know we're driving home and i just said my kid in the back so i'm like so what'd you think did you have fun he's like yeah and then he just started telling the story <laughs> that emergent storytelling like came out it's like oh and then we did that and that was really cool and i can't remember her name but her character did that thing and the, you know so that's that's awesome all right uh frank I think you get the last question, don't you? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I, I think we kind of touched on it. I, this, this applies to adults equally with kids. Uh, it's, it's the benevolent dictator that needs to be the GM. <laughs> um, you, they need to know who's in charge. And, and that's just the end of it. Like that you make the decision as the GM off we go, move on. Um, we also kind of need to reinforce and respect the boundaries and structure of the game, but also the group. So some people are going to be playing characters that have certain roles. Others have different ones. So make sure that you understand that everyone, like, like Johnny is playing this, Susie is playing that. Um, be fair, funny, and respectful, but also consider their expectations. Like, what is it that they're looking to have? I mean, uh, some of them might be more uh, leaning towards that hack and slash solution space. Others might be more uh, let's let's talk our way through it. And and there is to some extent at this age group 
a, a particular gender gap in the way that they are going to approach things. Um, we, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole too far, but just to understand mm -hmm. that regardless, whatever the dynamic is of the players at the table, um, shape the adventure to their expectations to help reinforce everyone's success. Um, th there's also some of the other uh, ways of dealing with kids in general. Uh, it's different than, than correcting an adult's behavior because in an adult, you say, this is not the way things work. Let's reel it back in because the rules or your character alignment or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. says otherwise. Are, do you really want to go there understanding that there are consequences to this decision you're about to make? Um, so the same idea with uh, in terms of the group dynamic, telling somebody of that age group to stop that without an option or an outlet that steers them in the way that you want them to go is, is a recipe for disaster. So like any child, if you just tell them, stop doing that, that's wrong. Okay, well, great. You've, you've given me a binary way of doing things. Stop doing what I want to do. And then uh, because you said so, or keep doing it because I still enjoy what it is that I'm doing. All right, well, I think I know which choice I'm going to take. And I think everybody would understand which choice most people would take. But if you give them a specific series of choices as an outlet, as a different way of doing things, uh, and this is one of those things you got to do on the fly sometimes, um, it, it gives the kids an option space to go, an outlet to choose, as opposed to what they were initially proposing. That, that whole, do you want to stab Johnny in the back and steal his gold? Uh, wait a second. Um, it's not really in your alignment. Did, did, did you want to like, like X, Y, Z, whatever that case may be. Um, you know, what you want them to do instead of what not to do. Uh, and then ask them if they have something to contribute over, uh, you know, in terms of group dynamics, if there's a, a disagreement, ask them if they have something to contribute instead of saying, stop being mean to the other players or stop like stop trying to pick of a, you know, in, in terms of the audience that we're trying to keep in mind here, I'm trying to pick my language. Uh, s s stop being mean. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, don't be a bully. Don't be a brat. Yeah, exactly. Or, or, you know, you're hurting Timmy's feelings. Uh, you know, it's like, instead of saying that, because there's a, that negative connotation, put the onus on that individual. Now it's like, well, what would you contribute in this scenario? What is it that you and your character uh, should be doing in this case, as opposed to that? Um, you know, would you do X? Would you do Y? Would you do Z? And then more times than not, they're, they're just going to pick the easy option of, of picking door number one, two, or three, whatever ones you give them as an option. <laughs> Monty Hall. Pretty much, yeah. So yeah. what, do you, what do you do when a child prefers to work alone? You know, you got the lone wolf kid already starting off at age, you know, whatever, eight, nine, ten, and he wants to be a lone wolf it, rather than with the group. Yeah, we, we talked about this in part one, I think it was. It's, it's that teasing out the, the, the child's personality in the context of their character. So, so kind of contain them in that bubble as the initial discussion space. Uh, and then slowly dovetail into the scenario that involves the rest of the group and, and, you know, giving them maybe spoon feeding them options that their character might be able to do. And again, you probably only have to do this maybe about, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe two or three times before they get more comfortable in the dynamic and the fact that their character does probably something that none of the others could anyways. Um, you know, that, that, that character might, just not understand the the game dynamic give them an outlet uh they don't understand how this particular spell works probably not the character class you should have given them but even if you did uh start giving them that option start giving them like the the different ways yeah that spell can do this this or this does that does any of those sound interesting yeah i'll go with that one okay and then weave it into the experience so that everyone understands that that character just contributed to everyone's success. Okay, well, we're eight minutes over time, but I'm going to ask a final follow-up question. This is for all of you guys. And uh, how do I want to do this? Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? What I'd like you guys to do, I'd like you guys to answer this question. 
each in turn, and then also shill yourself your your blogs, your YouTube channels, whatever whatever else that you've got at the same time, and then we'll go into super chats. Uh, so the question is this: uh, Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. It's a nice it's a nice simple one. What advice? After all this is said and done, what advice would you give to other game masters looking to start running games for children? And we'll just start at the top because it'll just make life easier. Start with uh, Francois. Um, so when you're starting with kids, uh, tailor the adventure to, uh, you know, to simplify the adventure and simplify uh, the rules that you're going to use. And, and then use those uh, prefabricated characters to start and then develop it from there. Uh, but ultimately, just because they're kids does not mean that these are not individuals that will provide an enriching experience that maybe the adults uh, who might be more jaded than these individuals, um, they might provide an exceedingly rewarding experience. Show them the respect and value of their inputs and they will probably develop probably some of the most heroic and victorious stories and reactions to what you put in front of them. Uh, be prepared to veer off that garden path. Understand <laughs> that rules are a framework and that if you're spending too much time thinking about how the rule works, then understand that their time and their uh, attention spans do not support you going into the books. So figure it out on the fly. Be prepared to create that hack and slash dungeon delve if that's what they want. Uh, otherwise, um, give them the opportunity to be those heroes and enjoy their turns. Um, and 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 like I said, this this is I, I think possibly one of the most rewarding experiences a new GM might have if you're willing to go and 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 uh, risk that opportunity space uh, it's it's not for everybody don't think that you have to do rpgs for kids if you are not comfortable doing it i honestly i would say as a warning space don't force yourself into that space if you're not comfortable to possibly have to deal with parents or the personality conflicts of 12 14 year olds whatever uh that, like some people can't deal with adult conflicts <laughs> uh, I can't imagine what somebody would be thinking or trying to do to solve a conflict with somebody else's kids uh, and then also having to deal with the parents after the fact. Um, so that, that, that's pretty much my, my last, uh, you know, the conclusionary notes, if you want to call mm -hmm. them that, uh, that, that's where I would lead off. And people can find you on www.scholarlyadventures.com where yep. And on the Palladium Discord that I have that I think only he and I use. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. So, yeah, uh, the blog, uh, it's it's a written uh, and, and visual blog in terms of images, so not videos. Uh, but on there, you're going to find uh, uh, everything that you could possibly probably want, if not some more things. So there we have it there. Uh, you're going to find, uh, you know, book reviews for pretty much just about every Rifts publication that's been made so far. Um, there is OCC overviews that talks about the different classes you'll find in Rifts Ultimate Edition, which goes into a deep dive of what they are, uh, how to play them, how I would play them as an example, uh, and then references that support that character class. Um, and then uh, there's a section in there for uh, the GM field guide, which has a lot of articles that deals with, uh, you know, like we've got metagaming. Uh, there's the different OCC overview index. There's one in there that is particularly popular. It's uh, what game uh, materials you need to start running a game in Rifts that is region specific with recommendations and books that are maybe just nice to haves that you don't necessarily need. Um, but, but uh, you know, it's, it's a rifts focused blog. All right. Get that off the screen there. Check that out. Yep. I try to read as many articles as I can. I know I'm behind on by more than a few, it's all good. but, uh, but it, but it is a good website to check out. If you are a played specifically rifts fan of any sort, or you just want some, Good breakdown, so I know if Heathen Dog's lying or not on his stream. <laughs> All 
All right, let's uh, bounce down to Nagahide down here, sir. The same question for you, but I'll ask it again. Uh, what advice would you give to other game masters looking to start running games for children? Uh, I would say know your audience, know what their interests are, know what, th why, know why they want to play the game. Um, and what kind of game are they interested in? Are they into the fantasy? Are they into the sci-fi? Are they into the mutant animal, teenage mutant ninja turtle? Or, or are they super young and they're more into like the Saturday morning cartoon, Captain Caveman kind of thing? <laughs> Uh, God, uh, to, Captain K. <laughs> oh man, that's that's an oldie. Okay, good. We are good showing one. our age. Yes. Yeah, All yeah, right, I know. They have that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on top of that, Frank said a lot of of the information already. Like, be if 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 you're not prepared, don't run a game for kids uh also be if if you're running if you're going to run a game for kids and you don't have kids yourself make sure you do meet with the parents so that you know what your limitations as a game master are going to be based on what the parents expect if the parents say you learning. can't duct tape a kid to the wall don't run right. that game right exactly um but as far as uh i don't have any streaming channels or anything i don't have any youtube or or instagram or he just hangs out with that. us so, yeah <laughs> I, I i enjoy hanging out with nerdy guys that talk about nerdy stuff so that's why i'm here well then let's hit up our final nerd here Lord Mattias, uh, obviously the same question for you. What advice would you give to other game masters looking to start running games for children? Uh, a lot of it's already been said and summed up quite nicely. I, you know, I've said it before. You got to go where the kids are. You know what they want to do. You may really want to play giant robots with missiles, and they want to, you know, ride dinosaurs and swing axes. You know, um, yeah, and that's cool. And in fact, that sounds like actually pretty awesome now that or i use just a loud. big club you know whatever yeah yeah um i think find a rule set that's going to allow you to be flexible because at the end of the day this is not about what a lot of us adult nerds like to argue about and get passionate about it's about introducing them to this awesome hobby which is this collaborative storytelling game and I don't think the rules are as important. That's uh, so finding something that's flexible so you have a structure. Uh, that's why I really like Shadow Dark. I think it's perfect for this. Um, and no, I'm not getting paid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but uh, I w not that I would say no if she wanted to pay me to say it. Um, She's got the money. <laughs> I, yeah. um, and then I think the last thing would be be patient. Um, you know, because kids are going to be who they are. And, you know, like I said, my son, after about 90 minutes of solo gaming with me, he's done. Uh, and after a couple hours with the, the 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 Keep on the Borderlands crew, they're done. And that's, and that's fine. That's totally cool. Be patient with them. And be patient with yourself because you are going to be tested. Um, you know, people talk about a good game master is able to think on the fly and, and um, improvise. Um, <laughs> you don't know what the kids are going to do and, and it, it just you'll you will be tested so be patient with yourself so um i guess that's all i can really add to all of that okay and um, your youtube channel oh uh, yeah it's just lord mattius um i do actual plays deep dives um moving into advice stuff uh soon i might um uh, actually working with a friend to uh, maybe start doing a live stream of sorts um late friday night so we're not butting up against this one um and i have a blog uh lord mattius at word uh is it lord mattius slash wordpress or maybe it's wordpress .com. i don't i don't i don't remember the the actual did you, did you send me the link or no i i did send you the link so it'll be in the uh, yeah um and yeah, I also got some stuff that you can find at Giant Slayer Games and at the Red Room. And then I have a Lamentations module that you can get at uh, lotfp.com or drive through. 
I actually did not see that link earlier. It is in the description now, which means when it goes to video, I will have it in there. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank these fine gentlemen for being here 20 minutes later than than I want the stream to go, which is 11 minutes from now is when this, the entire, including segment five, is supposed to end. But I've, I've learned that these uh, discussions, if I really want to get a good discussion out of this and not have people tell me that I'm not letting anybody talk, that I've got to let it go longer. And, I, and hopefully they enjoyed the time here with it going longer. Uh, so let's read some of the chat. People, you just seen uh, the last stream that we did had uh, Sean on from Palladium Books, and they're like, "Man, can Sean talk?" It's like, well, it wasn't just Sean. Sean took over segment one, but I think everybody realized after that that oh, I get to talk that much, and Wade talked too. But it was good; it was really good discussion that they had. But that's the number one comment I've got so far: is man, Sean can say a lot. That's good stuff, though. All right, Zach Appleton says. Is group XP not good enough of a tool to encourage child player group cooperation? I think that's uh, as a tool, it certainly is. I mean, like XPs for the group doing something well, everyone gets a thousand XPs. Like that's for adults, that would certainly be a much more tangible thing for them. But for for a kid, um, unless they've got like a chart right there, I mean, like, and, and again, we get to the math skills. It's like, I was to give you a thousand XPs for having done such a brilliant job, everybody together, how close do you get to your next level? And then you watch them do math. I mean, like things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, multiple ways of getting a group dynamic to work together. XPs is, is one of them. It's just maybe not, not the primary one that you could use. That's right. I might also determine, uh, be determined by the age of the child too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think it's, it's absolutely determined by the age. I think I've noticed with younger, the younger the player is, the leveling up is a more tangible achievement than just receiving XP every session. Now, when they're teenagers and or the the high end of what we're saying, child gaming, like sure. fourteen years old, then yeah, the that XP is definitely going to help them focus on teamwork and. With the Palladium system, I've actually used negative um, experience points as encouragement to work as a work as a group in, in a in a game that I totally forgot about until just now. I've done that before as well. Not often, but I have done that before as well. I, I give out little slips at the end of every game that uh, says how many how many experience points or legend points you get, and I put on there. This is what you got for combat. This is what you got for um, for role playing, whatever. And then I'll put notes on there. Minus five hundred. You were late. You take away XP because I was late. Yeah, this is part of group dynamics, dum dum. People were waiting for you to be here. We had to wait on you. So no. Yeah, you're going to lose 500 for being late. Guess what? They're not often late. <laughs> you know, oh, I, I, but, uh, I, I don't hand slips of paper. I'll tell them flat. I'll tell them out in the open so everybody knows. No, I do. I do the slips of paper because it helps me. You just write stuff down during the oh. course of the adventure, or like what you know, who did right, what, right, and right, so right. forth. So, so, I just, and, it, and then they keep it for their recording as well. Um, I can see. show you what I use later in session five. So Bear the Gen X GM has now become a new member. He's not really a new member. He's just re-upped his membership, but this is how YouTube wanted to send it to me. Thank you, Bear. Appreciate that. Hope your game went well. Uh, TD says, personally, I've never seen kids enjoy a game when and where the D the DM plays a pseudo-parent role. So if, the, so if the dungeon master is playing a parent role also, uh, they live that, rightfully so, playing a game is supposed to be make-believe break from daily life. Can I respond to that? Actually, yeah, absolutely, please. Um, I'm gonna. I, I I kind of agree with the sentiment, but I also kind of disagree. Um, uh, you know, part of the reason why I have a friend of mine join the Dungeons and Dads thing is so I can be impartial, and there is this impartiality sort of thing being presented. So my son has my buddy to turn to for advice, so and I can just be the GM. However, I am dealing with an eight-year-old and some 12 year olds uh, and their sort of energy and they're uh, trying to figure each other out and um, they're, you know, juvenile um, 
nature is that I, I don't have a problem with just kind of giving them a look when they, I think someone is starting to get a little out of line. You know what I mean? I haven't had, um, I haven't had to do it a lot. In fact, I think maybe once or twice, and it even wasn't a big deal. I just said, Hey, you know, this is a team game. You know, that's, that's not nice, you know? Um, but there are kids and they, and this, that there are these sort of like meta rules, the group dynamic that needs to be understood and only adults can teach that, you know? And I think that is sort of, uh, I don't want to say that's my role per se, but I do have to control that table. So I don't, I don't have a problem. And that's why I said earlier, you shouldn't, if you shouldn't be afraid to just kind of be like, Hey, you know, you're it's a, you know, as a team. Yeah. One of the things that I think that uh, modern society has lost of compared to when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s growing up is that for good reason or an understandable reason, parents have forgotten or adults have forgotten that they have they do have a role to be adults. Partially, it's because parents say, don't you dare touch my kid. Don't you talk to my kid. Oh, like, I, I cannot stand this mentality. Man, my neighbors, if I got out of hand, my stepdad didn't even like my neighbors. If I got out of hand, I would have a neighbor grab me by the back of my neck, lift me off the ground and bring me to my house and say, this is where you belong if you're going to act like a fool. Now, I'm not saying physically beat people up and so forth. But the, but the point is, is like this whole idea, like, no, you're an adult. You are to be respected. Mm -mm, my kid only respects people who deserves it. Then you're raising your kid wrong. The adults should get the respect first. You don't have to like them, but the adults should get the respect first. And until he doesn't deserve it anymore. The dynamic between adults is different than the dynamic between kids and adults. And, and so I understand that sometimes parents or adults will be like, I, I can't say anything to his kid. I can't say anything to her kid. Yes, you can. And if the parent doesn't like it, the parent's the problem. Get, get the hell out. And, and, and uh, so what Lord Mateus was, uh, Lord Mateus was saying, I agree with generally speaking. Yeah. You know what? You are always, you should always as an adult be seen as an authority figure. And I don't mean the boss. I mean, as a sense of authority figure, a respected person, uh, especially when you're in the role of the game master, because you're also managing the game as well. And the kids have to recognize I, as an adult, if, if Frank here is running the game, I put my trust in Frank. Yeah. So it's why the hell would I expect that from a kid? It's that benevolent dictator uh, that comes back to to be like you're the you're the GM. You're not there to parent the child. You're there to manage the group, manage the group dynamic, mm -hmm. and and maintain the, the you know we talked about maintain the pace, which is a bad way of putting it, but maintain the direction of the adventure, the direction of everyone's intent. To, to get from uh, start to the objective, whatever that happens to be. Um, at the end of it, if there is something that needs to be corrected, um, it's, it's like you correct it immediately there within the confines of the group dynamic. And then afterwards, you talk to the parent and the parent does the parenting. Um, that's, that's their job to correct Johnny or Susie being, uh, being stupid with other group members. Yeah. I, although I do agree with you, Max, uh, and, and I am that one parent that has yelled at somebody else's kid for, you know, standing on the top of the monkey bars and trying to step on the people's hands while they're, uh, trying to go from one side to the other. And How dare you that. yell at my kid? He's just having fun. You're not, you know, what, yeah. what happened? I don't believe in the whole concept of yeah. it takes a village to raise a child, but I don't understand why yeah. other adults can't can't look at a situation like that. So, so my, my thing is like, if kids doing that to me, how dare you put your hands on my kid? He put his hands on me. I have zero issues with putting my hands on your kid. He needed to be subdued. And uh, you know, there's this whole idea and pardon me if I'm not turning this into, to uh, don't want to get too crazy with this, but it's this idea of like, like adults aren't, aren't allowed to be adults anymore. And, and children are this, Invalid, uh, you cannot look at, touch, talk about. Screw that. You are the future of humanity. I absolutely get to be out there and set the tone for your behavior. If mine is wrong, then the parents and I will have to address is this society not meant for me anymore? You know, whatever. You know, you, you if parent, again, if parent has a problem with what you're doing in that group dynamic, it's their responsibility to pull their kid and go to a different table that meets their worldview um yes. it's 
not my position to educate the worldview of your kids. Um, right. It's it's to manage the group dynamic. That's it. That's all. Point but I do, but I do agree with the con the the comment that was made earlier, where ki you know teaching the next generation of game masters so that kids can be around their own age is absolutely spot on. All right, I don't want to I don't want to belabor this uh, potentially political point here, so I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, uh, is anyone going to Big Bad Con in California this October? Well, you said the word California, so the answer is no. People from California, well, it wasn't directly California, but people from my home state of Minnesota um, are basically wannabe Californians, and I had to escape there, and I live in the great state of Alabama now. Yeehaw. It's too hot in Alabama. I can't. It is I too can't. hot in Alabama. <laughs> oh, my God. Is it too hot down here? You are not lying, sir. Oops, I didn't mean to, I meant to do that. All right. Well, <laughs> this is an interesting stream. Uh I had a great time tonight. I want to put this up on here. Where is it? Where's my, uh, it was, uh, so we had first time, and that's right. Francois first time on here. Thank you very much. I, th I think it was great. Lord Mateus and Naga Hyde have been on before. They're back again. It was good to see them. Uh, Please like, subscribe, share. This Sunday on RPG Digest, I will be continuing on with Twilight 2000. I forget exactly what I'm talking about because I can't find my note cards. And without note cards, I don't exist as a human being. So anyway, I'll be continuing on with, uh, I think it's talking about uh, just more ha like generic hazards, like falling and radiation and some nonsense like that. Uh, so weird things that can happen to you out there uh, in the world. And then Heathen Dog is going to cover the Rifter number eight with a focus on some sort of werebats and uh, I think Necromancer OCCs for rifts, if I remember correctly. How do I remember more about his segment than mine? That is weird. And then, so that'll be this Sunday. And then next Friday, 13 September on some rando RPG live stream, we are going to have dun, 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 TSR versus Watsy. That's right. We're going to have it out. It's going to be the fight of the ages. No, it's not. It's not actually intended to be uh, at I hate TSR or I hate Watsy. It's actually to talk about just the differences of them and the cultural impacts that each have made in the hobby as a whole. So I'm sure I'll have some snide remarks about the Watsy fantasy role playing game that is not Dungeons and Dragons, but that is not the intent of, of what uh, next week is to be about. And we should have with us a bear, the Gen X GM. Harmony Ginger for her first time on the show and Malachi. So that should be fun. So please, if you enjoy this discussion, please like the video, subscribe to Legion Myth and to all of the panelists whose links you can find in the description. And thank you very much to people in chat. Thank you very much to the panelists. I'm going to finish on this last super chat that snuck in right under, <laughs> right before the buzzer. Here we go. I teach my kids the same thing. The same thing. There we go. My parents taught me respect all adults, but give some extra respect for adults without kids because you'll annoy them more than adults who are used to kids. There's actually truth to that. My dad raised me and my mom, even though my dad and mom were, were split, uh, you know, I had a stepdad, uh, taught me I was to say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It did not matter. Please, thank you. All that. So it didn't matter who it was. You don't. You don't have to like the guy. He could have been mean to you, but it's still yes, sir. And if I didn't say that, I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't. I didn't get you know the change for the quarters for the arcade machine or whatever. Um, I was required to do all that because that was instilled in me. You are the child. That person's the adult. If that person treats you poorly, I will handle that. That is not your place as the child to handle it. 